The 2018 MacBook Pros, how well do they hold up in 2024? What's great about them? What sucks about them? And should you get one for yourself? Well, those are the questions we're gonna be answering in today's video, so stay tuned. Now, to start off, I'm assuming some of you are watching this because you just came back from looking up what the minimum requirements are to run macOS Sonoma, and these laptops, along with the 2018 MacBook Air, are the cheapest MacBooks that can run it. You can find these for around $400 for the 13-inch model and around $500 for the 15-inch model, which for a $400 to $500 laptop, especially build quality-wise, these aren't bad. Now, if you are thinking about buying one of these laptops or checking out the current prices and stuff or another laptop and you want to support the channel with a small percent of your purchase, I will have links down below in the description uh, if you want to do that. Now, starting off with the design, both the 15-inch and the 13-inch have practically the same exact design. They both have this slim, you know, aluminum body design, which really holds up well durability-wise, especially if you compare it to some of the cheaper plastic laptops they find new for around this price. And then for ports, you have two USB-C ports on the left-hand side and two USB-C ports and a headphone jack on the right-hand side, which I know a lot of accessories and stuff are moving towards USB-C. But I also know that me and a lot of other people still have USB accessories, SD card slots, and all that type of stuff that we need, which you can buy adapters for these. Um, I would highly recommend if you are buying one to get a name brand one uh, from somewhere like Acer or Anchor, just because I made the mistake of buying a knockoff one. And over time, my SD card reader stopped working and my USB ports stopped working. So if you make sure you buy a high quality adapter, uh, that shouldn't be an issue whatsoever for you. And then continuing off the trackpad, the trackpad on this is really unique because it uses a haptic motor to simulate a click, which makes it a lot more premium feeling than what you get out of a cheaper diving board style trackpad. It also has these gestures too that you can do for things like scrolling and like swiping for content. And it feels really natural using this trackpad and it's really responsive. It's not like those cheap trackpads that I've seen on a lot of other cheap laptops around this price. So that is really appreciated uh, with this. And then the keyboards on these, while they are a improvement over the 2017 MacBook Pro keyboards, they still feel kind of hard to type on in my opinion. They are really prone to getting dust and crumbs within the keyboard area itself, which makes it not really respond well or makes it like crunchy. And that can be really annoying. So if you are thinking about buying one of these, maybe buy it from somewhere that has like a return policy or a warranty in case it arrives sticky or not really responsive. And the keyboards on these, they are um, decent enough, I'd say to use, but if I was like a heavier typer or somebody who wanted to avoid these issues that these keyboards are known for having, I would try to go and get like a 2020 or newer MacBook just because that's around the time Apple fixed this issue and these problems stopped happening. And then you might notice too, this little display above the keyboard, and this display is called the touch bar. And what the touch bar allows you to do is turn gestures and stuff in apps. So if you're in Microsoft Word, for example, there's like a deal where you can change the text color of different things using this display. And also in Microsoft Excel, there's like different like fill shortcuts. So this touch bar is really handy for some applications that take advantage of it. But for others, it's kind of annoying because Let's say you need to use the function key row, for example. Well, you have to press the function key button and then you can tap on the key. Or if you need to adjust the brightness, well, now you need to go and tap on like the sub menu and like use a slider. And that can be really annoying for some people. So that's just something to keep in mind productivity wise before you buy this laptop is if that touch bar is something you'll actually appreciate. And speaking of something that is really appreciated, the display on this is something that a lot of people absolutely love about this laptop. So the display on this has something called a retina display. And what that is, is basically, let's say you're looking at a screen from three feet away. It's Apple's marketing term of saying, okay, it's basically a high resolution enough where you're not gonna notice any pixels and everything's gonna be crisp and clear. So this is really nice because when you're typing or viewing like typed content or watching movies, it seems really, really high quality, especially compared to the other laptops that I find brand new for around this price. And you also get some other features too, like P3 white color gamut for better color accuracy, up to 500 nits of brightness, and something called True Tone, which basically adjusts the colors of the display to match your ambient environment. So the display on this is definitely a whole lot higher quality 
than what you get out of a new laptop for this price. And typically for a new laptop around this $400 to $500 range, you get a 1920 by 1080 display and you basically don't really get that great of colors. You have like this plastic thing or the display, which makes it look cheap. And with this laptop, you don't have to worry about that. You get like one of the highest quality displays out there still. Now, even though this display is great and all, it's not completely prone to problems. So you might have noticed in some of my B-roll shots here, this kind of like stage light effect at the bottom. And what causes that is basically this laptop model, uh, the 13 and 15 inch 2018 MacBook Pros, were known to have this issue where crumbs and stuff would kind of get in the vents and they would affect the display cable. And people have had their displays go out completely with this issue. And Apple did have a recall, however, they stopped that program. So that might be something that may concern people and may want people to go somewhere that has a warranty. Just because if that display goes out, that display is practically worth about as much as the laptop and you practically total it. Now, enough talk about how pretty this laptop looks. I know you're all interested in the real stuff, which is performance. And performance on this thing is decently good. However, it is prone to overheating at times when you do heavier tasks and the battery life does drain a little bit quicker. But in general, performance is decently good on this thing. Now, the model I have here is a 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of Radeon Pro 560X graphics and a 2.6 gigahertz six core i7. Now, the first thing I tried doing on this laptop was video editing and video editing in Final Cut Pro, things ran really smoothly and had any issues using it. However, I mainly do 1080p video editing, so I wasn't really, really pushing this. But I do have to keep in mind this laptop at one point was somebody's main professional video editing laptop. So if it performed well then, it's still gonna perform well now. Photo editing also performed really well. I was able to edit photos and the high resolution display in the P3 wide color gamut uh, really gives you a really nice display to do photo editing on, especially for a cheaper laptop around this price range. And gaming, I tried playing Minecraft on this and I get anywhere between 90 to 100 frames per second, no problem. And it would dip down you know, as low as 60 when I load in new chunks, but that's typically normal. And the Radeon Pro 560X graphics did a really good job of making games run well on this thing. And then as for battery life, Apple advertised this laptop new with 10 hours of battery life. However, because batteries do age over time, you are gonna get a little bit less. So you're more likely gonna get up to nine hours. However, that is still gonna be good enough for the average user. But if you do do a lot of heavier tasks, it will help to bring a charger with you just because the battery life is gonna drain a lot quicker. And as for support, this laptop still gets the latest versions of macOS, macOS Sonoma. However, in six months from now, it's probably not gonna get the next major macOS release. However, you are still gonna be able to get the latest updates for a lot of apps that I use for quite a while. So Apple's Pro apps like Final Cut Pro, GarageBand, Logic, you're still gonna get about one to two years of the latest updates for those. And then for Microsoft apps, Adobe Suite apps, you're gonna get probably about four, maybe even five years of the latest updates for that stuff. And then finally, of course, with web browsing, downloading apps off the web, you're gonna get seven plus years out of that and it's gonna last you a long time. Now, I might be curious what some of your other options are to consider out there. And one option you could consider on the 15 inch MacBook side is getting a 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. And with that, you are gonna get an extra year of software support, you get an extra inch on the display. And then you also get a upgraded 2.6 gigahertz i7 instead of the base 2.2 gigahertz i7 that I get on this laptop. And you can find these for around $600 to $800, which ain't really bad. And then you might be wondering too, what about the 2019 15 inch MacBook Pro? That is another option. However, if the 16 inch MacBook Pro is like around the same price, it doesn't make sense to get a 15 inch MacBook Pro. So definitely compare the prices between the 15 inch and the 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro before you go out and make a purchase. And if your goal is to go really high end, you could get an M2 15 inch MacBook Air, which those you can find for around $1,000. However, you do have to spend extra money to get more RAM and more storage, which can add a lot of extra cost if you need that stuff. But you do get a lot of extra cool features with it, like a newer design, a much better processor, much better battery life, and it fixes a lot of the issues that this MacBook was known for having. And then on the 13 inch MacBook Pro side, some other options you can consider are the 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. 
So those you can find for around $300, so you do save a little bit more, but it only goes up to Mac OS Ventura, and the keyboard is a little bit more prone to having issues. But with that extra money you save, you are getting a similar experience to what you get on the 2018s, so that is another option you can consider as well. And then finally, if your goal is to get a really nice laptop, you could get a used or refurbished M1 MacBook Air. Those you can find for around $650. And again, has like twice the battery life, much better performance, and it fixes a lot of the issues these were known for having. And then of course, if you want more RAM, more storage, well, you have to pay extra, and that can add a lot of extra cost. But in the end, this laptop is a great laptop for people who are looking for a professional laptop without spending a ton of money. And even though this laptop is prone to having overheating issues, uh, issues with the keyboard and the display, it ain't a bad laptop for the price you're paying. But I am curious though, what are you guys' thoughts on this laptop down below and what other options we consider? I will have links to the description down below if you wanna check out the current prices or buy one of these. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.